2022. Uh, so, you know, it, it basically means that time is mo moves relentlessly and thus it's imperative that we build momentum toward delivering on, you know, our various commitments. So on behalf of Working Group B, uh, I really would like to thank the African research team for producing this uh, two-part report uh, that is at the heart of today's discussions. I'd also like to thank Global Affairs Canada for sponsoring it. And certainly uh, I'd like to thank members of the project oversight group, uh, very specifically uh, Clee Aiken from uh, CERT New Zealand, uh, Richard Harris uh, from MITRE, and uh, Martin Van Horenbeck, uh, who was the former lead of the GFCE Working Group B Cyber Incident Management Task Force. And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, the GFCE Secretariat and uh, Velimir. Uh, I won't say your name, last name, so I don't butcher it myself, but <clears throat> thank you for your efforts. And uh, again, thank you to the GFCE Secretariat team. National computer security incident response teams <clears throat> have been deemed necessary in defending against and preventing cyber attacks and limiting harm to citizens, businesses, governments, and related institutions. Although there are universal calls for establishing CSERTs at the national level, especially towards protecting critical infrastructure uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, and our lives from cyber threats, uh, discrepancies do exist uh, based on a nation's resources, the cultural context, uh, capabilities and needs. Many countries have established uh, national certs or C certs with, na with national responsibilities, uh, which in this report are referred to as uh, NC certs. However, uh, low income countries are, while well, you know, they're doing the best they can, um, it is certainly in our collective uh, enlightened self-interest to build mutually beneficial relationships that strengthen the overall uh, cybersecurity ecosystem. So in today's webinar, uh, we will get a snapshot of the findings and recommendations from the Cyber Incident uh, Management in Low Income Countries project that was funded by Global Affairs Canada. The project created a two-part guide that dived into what was needed for low-income countries to develop or improve their CSERT capabilities in an affordable way, and also uh, to respond to evolving, uh, you know, the cyber threat environment in an effective manner. Part one of the report comprises of a thorough desktop review of academic and grey literature, such as reports of security vendors, independent organizations and government entities, and, you know, some inserts themselves. Uh, in the list of NC CERT services, uh, you know, it lists, let me say, NC CERT services and identifies some organizational models, uh, applied incident handling processes, workflows, required human skills development, training resources, uh, applicable tool sets, maturity assessment methods, and certainly best practices in capacity development. Part two of the report discusses the findings and recommendations of the project based on surveys with 16 NC certs in low income or developing countries. These surveys and follow up semi structured interviews with three of these NC certs, the research team explored which services <clears throat> these C certs can deliver, what type of technical and organizational capacities they have, their medium and long term goals and their best practices in capacity building. <clears throat> Part two, uh, and I find this particularly interesting, presents a service roadmap with knowledge, skills, competencies, policies, guidelines, frameworks, tools, and trainings necessary to form or mature these competencies. The final part of the report discusses the innovative approaches to NC certs in capacity building and includes recommendations based on the data collected in the interviews. The report is perhaps the most comprehensive guide to the challenges that new or under-resourced NC certs face, the steps and the networks, in fact, that may be consulted to address uh, these challenges. And I really recommend that we all take the time to read, read the report. <clears throat> in Africa, it is said that success has many fathers. And this report really makes uh, all of us happy to be associated uh, you know, with the related processes that led to the production of this report. 
Uh, I congratulate and thank the African, uh, the African uh, CERT research team for their excellent work. And indeed, I thank them for making us proud. Uh, before I hand over the floor to the research team, uh, who can explain these matters uh, much, much better, uh, I would like to give the floor to Glo Global Affairs Canada if they are around, uh, because without their support, um, you know, we would have probably had a lot of difficulty, uh, you know, getting traction on this project. So if uh, Global Canada Affairs, uh, Global Affairs Canada rather, uh, is, is here, um, we would welcome a few words from you, if you don't mind. Hi, everybody. Yes, this is uh, uh, Nick Natalie here from okay. Global Affairs Canada. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm happy to just say a few words here quickly. So I can't turn on my camera. I'm, I have to join this through the Zoom one, and it doesn't work on my uh, on the internet because I don't have an app on here. Um, anyways, yeah, we are we're very we were very excited to support this this research. Um, you know, can we've constantly seen that research is continually lacking in in our cyber capacity building, and the work of the GSE to kind of start a lot of this um, establish a lot of this research has been something that we were really excited to be supporting. Um, and so this is, you know, something that we've been really excited to see, um, and I've been excited to pass it on to all of our colleagues and to help us kind of push our cyber capacity building further as we move forward. Um, so, you know, it's, it's something that we will try to continue to find ways to support, you know, in, in, in our uh, kind of mandates for capacity building, it's always sometimes a little challenging to support just kind of research on its own. But I think, you know, when we start producing kind of products like this and showing kind of the deep value to, to uh, supporting this kind of work that helps us you know, improve our capacity building writ large, it's something that, you know, that we'll be able to continue to show the value and we'll be able to keep, uh, keep supporting. So, so having some products like this coming out now um, from this kind of first initial stage of the GSD research kind of agenda is something that is uh, you know, extremely, extremely important. So we thank everyone for all your work on this and uh, we're excited to see what comes next. Thank you very, very much, Nick. Uh, and again, uh, once again, thank you Global Affairs Canada. So um, I, I believe um, you can see on the screen uh, the bios of the research team. Um, so you know, basically, uh, I would uh, ask Jean Robert Boutonnet to um, explain to us uh, and educate us on <clears throat> what went into this. Jean Robert. Yes. Uh, good morning, Chair. Uh, good morning, colleague. Good morning, participants uh, and experts. Um, we would like to take this opportunity to express our gratitude to the sponsors and all the contributors to this project. Um, through, through the work and the research projects, the team researched and reported practices, experience, and lessons learned to ensure that the reader in a similar scenario of constrained resource could use the study as inspiration while standing their capability. We were immensely blessed to find out that when teams face challenges, they research, test, and implement new ideas. We recorded some of the lessons learned and good practice accounted. Uh, speaking about the research teams, uh, the, the research teams covered the diverse disciplinary background to provide a multi-phase perspective. The research team's profile is at the end of the report, and you can see also uh, their profile in the screen. Uh, I will try to be brief. Um, so part of the research teams, uh, we have uh, uh, Dr. Kalim uh, Osmani, manager of uh, Mauritius Computer Emergency Response Team. And I would like to acknowledge his contribution as uh, he and his guidance and assistance. Uh, other research teams member, uh, Professor Aredin Bassi. Uh, he is a research professor at the Center of Digital Forensic and Cybersecurity at Tallinn University of Technology in Estonia. Uh, Dr. Sherif Hashem. Uh, is full professor of information science 
and Technology at George Mission University. He is currently a member of the Board of Directors of FIRST, the Forum of Incident Response and Security Team, and a member of the African Union Cybersecurity Expert Group. Uh, Dr. Tata, uh, Assistant Professor of Cybersecurity in the College of Emergency and Preparedness. Homeland Security and Cyber Security at the University of Albany. Uh, he works as principal cyber security researcher in government industry and academia for over 17 years and was the former coordinator of Turkey National Computer Emergency Response Team. So uh, you can uh, read more about the research teams, as I, was, I said before. Uh, in my uh, uh, introduction. Uh, for the sake of time, um, I would like now to give the floor to Dr. Tata to present the methodology and overview of the main report takeaway. So Dr. Tata, please. Okay, I'm sharing my screen now for the presentation and thank you for the introduction, uh, Jean-Robert. Uh, can you see my screen now? Okay, perfect. Uh, uh, thank you for the introduction. Now I will present the findings of our report and uh, give a very brief overview of, of our report in around 20 minutes. Um, in this, pro in this presentation, I will talk about what was the goal of the project and what methods we used to achieve the final results and uh, share the, the findings from the part one, which, is, which was the literature review on available tools and trainings for developing capability for national sea search. And uh, later, I will talk about the second part of our report, which is the current state and the future projection for national sea search in low income or developing countries and what are the affordable tools and trainings for these scissors to, uh, to reach this capacity. And at the end, uh, based on the data we collected, uh, I will give some of the selected recommendations uh, we delivered in the report. At first, uh, the the goal of the project is, we, in this project, we aimed to create a tailorable guide for low-income countries to develop or improve their CSER capabilities in an affordable way to respond to the evolving cyber threat environment. So the budget, the resources are scarce, so we need to do it in an affordable way. And we know that if we don't have a globally uh, cyber resilient uh, environment, no one is secure and safe. So we need to, we are uh, supposed to develop this capacity in all of the uh, world, uh, all, for all of the nations. And to do this, we are delivering some affordable uh, tools and techniques and trainings. We listed them or we provided uh, an approach for developing uh, capacity in, in these countries. To do this first, we identified the current CSER state in low-income countries. What I mean, what are the services they deliver now, their personal capacity, technical capabilities, technological infrastructure, legal base, and whenever applicable, their governance structure. Later, we identified the services in uh, which low-income countries want to deliver in the next five years. Later, we mapped the CSER services in the first services framework to the required knowledge, skills, and abilities, and also the technical tools. Later, we uh, map them to the affordable tools and trainings, how this uh, capacity can be developed. Mm -hmm. And finally, we, uh, we uh, validated our uh, project deliverables by expert opinion. We used uh, 
two major methods. First one is desk review. We reviewed the literature. We reviewed the uh, both academic mm. literature and the grade literature. What are the methods already uh, published or uh, what are the best practices? What are the tools and trainings already available to CSERTs? And then by using this the desk review uh, results, we created a survey to see how the, the low income uh, CSERTs are doing. And then, uh, and then uh, conducting, uh, we, uh, we conducted the survey with uh, 16 respondents. And then to dig into the, our findings, uh, we conducted follow-up interviews with subject matter experts and we delivered our report. Now I will share, uh, we delivered two reports, part one and part two. I will uh, discuss the details of these reports now. The first uh, report, part one, was literature review. In this literature review, uh, we provided a broad overview of the maturity models, which are very helpful tools to see where you are, where a national C cert is. And this is also very helpful to plan where they want to be, what's their next step, how they can. Uh, plan their improvement and development. We discussed the details of the maturity assessment tools such as SIM3, NSS, maturity model, and some others. Later, we know that maturity models indicate the organizational settings improvement, but they do not answer how to improve it. At this stage, national CSORT guidelines and best practices play a very important role to show national CSORTs how to do it how to achieve their improvement goals, and uh, such as organizational values, models, processes, and hard skills or skills for their employees. We use GFC, uh, uh, the, 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 the reports from GFC, TFC, CERT, and others, some other CERTs, ITU, in these best practices and guidelines. Later, we scan the tools, trainings, uh, in high demand or highly used by the national C certs. And uh, also very important part here is uh, the specific national practices, because in this part, these are already uh, tried methods and they worked well in some settings. So it, they can be replicated in uh, by other national C certs. These national practices show how particular CSORs created funding to support their operations, accessing resources by regional collaboration for capacity building, or how they created a pipeline of CSORs from university students to their uh, employees. So these are the things we discussed in our literature review. In the part two of our report, uh, we uh, focused on the current state future projection and how these goals can be achieved for national sea source in low income countries. As I said, we conducted interview uh, surveys and interviews. Now, first I will share the results of these surveys. This will help us to see that uh, in which areas low income country sea source or national sea source are uh, delivering services and in what uh, service areas they plan some improvement or some new developments. The aim of our survey was to understand which services those CSERs deliver and what type of technical and organizational capabilities they have, what are their medium and long term goals, and their best practices also. And we created the survey questions based on our uh, desk review results. When we conducted this survey, uh, 28 respondents, uh, there were 28 respondents, but later we, in the analysis stage, we uh, eliminated the incomplete responses and repetitive submissions from the same national C cert. We uh, merged them. And at the final stage, uh, we analyzed 16 final responses. And I can say that national CSERT representatives responded 
respondent had a good understanding of a technical and organizational of the national sea source services in addition to a sufficient grasp of the national needs for the corresponding country so i can say that the the, the reliability of our uh, survey results are very high these are the countries which responded to our survey uh, you can see that this is a very diverse group based on geographical, some of the, most of them are in Africa, but some of them are in Latin America or Caribbean, uh, some of them are in Asia Pacific. And you can see their uh, global cyber maturity index ranking varies uh, from uh, like Mauritius and Egypt, 17 and 23, but some of them are very new in this area. They are uh, uh, in 100s. So, the, you can see it's very diverse. Some of them are very uh, established almost 15 years ago and uh, very experienced, but some of them are very new, established in 2018, 2020, 2021. So this is a very diverse group and we believe that this is, uh, uh, this reflects the overall picture of the, the developing country and the low-income country national sea suits. In our survey results, we used to, to identify what uh, which services they deliver and what services they want to deliver in the next five years. We used the first C search services framework to identify this, and we used a scale uh, the, the 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 maturity level of delivering these services from basic to intermediate to advanced. So they responded based on this, if the service is delivered at an intermediate level, or if they want to deliver it in the next five years at an advanced level. These are the, 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 the questions we asked them. And you can see on the slide, the five service areas in the CSERT, uh, first CSERT services framework 2.1. And now I want to share some general results from our uh, survey. When we asked the general resource problems among the 16 respondents, four of them, them indicated they, they do not have sufficient office space and a relevant physical environment. 11 of them indicated they do not have sufficient staff. 10 of them indicated staff are not sufficiently trained, which also shows that why this uh, project and the report is important to help these countries. And two of the national sea source staff are not involved in national or international events. And just only one national sea source doesn't have sufficient funds. Regarding our question, uh, our question regarding the human resource challenges, one sea source uh, indicated they have sufficient staff to fulfill their services with high quality. This is very good but most of them are not fortunate as fortunate as them and uh, one uh, five national sea source have sufficient staff but they they need to increase the qualification to improve service quality and nine nine of them said they need more staff members to provide better quality service and one has a, a significant staff shortage What technical skills they need? What are the, the, the technical skills in the highest demand? Malware analysis, SCADA security, cyber threat monitoring and analysis. These are the, uh, the skills, technical skills in highest demand, while uh, nine of them indicated improved network forensics, Two of them just said IT service administration and six of them said incident handling. So we can say that these uh, two areas, which are very important also for national sea search are kind of available in, uh, in this, uh, in the, in the, for the sea search in the scope of this research. We all know that technical skills are very important for national sea search, actually for all sea search. And soft skills are sometimes as important as them. And uh, at this point, 
when we ask them which uh, soft skills are needed for their employees or for their organization, among the 16 national sisters, half of them indicated that their staff needs to improve written and oral communication and relationship management at the national and international levels. As this is very important, especially for national sisters. And six of them, almost uh, one third of them indicated their staff uh, needs to improve their ability to cope with stress and problem solving. And uh, three of them indicated the staff needs, improve, needs to improve their presentation skills, which is related with oral communication skills, actually. And uh, team management, only five of them indicated this. When we look at the tools they need, uh, the threat intelligence feeds, the reverse engineering tools, and uh, malware analysis tools and vulnerability scanning tools are the top tools they need to improve their services or to deliver their uh, services at a, at a high quality. These are the services at high demand. You can see that we have also digital forensic tools and none of the 16 national CSOs indicated they need anything about digital forensics. We believe that this is because of the digital forensics is one of the core, uh, core functions of uh, incident handling, incident response. So when they established, this is the first tools they obtained. So they need less in digital forensics, but more on more advanced skills, such as threat intelligence feeds, reverse engineering tools, and uh, malware analysis tools. Alongside this, uh, stakeholder management tools, 10 of them said stakeholder management tools are also needed. In terms of challenges to uh, obtaining these tools and the nature of these tools, 13 of them mentioned uh, they don't have enough budget to buy high quality tools. They have very limited budget. And 12 of them use open source tools in production environments, while five of them said they prefer open source tools rather than the commercial tools. But four of them said they don't prefer to use open source tools and or they use it just for testing purposes. The, 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 result, the main reason uh, behind uh, avoiding or refraining from using the open source tools was the support mechanism they need. And uh, sometimes their uh, personnel are not qualified enough or uh, trained enough to uh, configure or, or uh, troubleshoot these open source tools. Regarding the trainings, although a host of free and affordable training platforms exist for national CSERs, a majority do not utilize platforms like EDX, Coursera, Udemy, Udacity, Linda, or others. These are all uh, platforms freely available, but uh, they are not, I, we cannot say that they are utilized by the national CSERs. A host of training providers exist, uh, but when we look at uh, for the for the 16 national CSOs, first Africa source and I2 are used several times or more frequently than others. And 15, 15 of these uh, 16 national CSOs indicated that they used or frequently used first uh, CSOR trainings. So these these are the maybe one of the most useful or helpful trainings for the national CSOs. There are other providers uh, for the national CSOR trainings, such as o OAS, Crest, Laxord. They are known by most of the respondents, but only a few of them used them. Uh, it was very interesting, some of them, and I think it's a very useful information. And uh, we discussed this in the recommendation sections of our report in detail. Some of these national CSORs uh, developed some. Uh, uh, relationships with SANS, ISC, Square, CompTIA at the national level to, to access these trainings in an affordable way. 
So this can be good uh, ways of uh, practices of good best practices of uh, accessing this high quality, usually not very affordable uh, trainings in an affordable way. The survey results were, were very helpful, very informative for us to shape our the rest of our study. But uh, we wanted to get a deeper view to find out the underlying reasons or the details or the root causes of our findings in the survey results. So we interviewed with, we conducted in-depth interviews with three of the national CSERs already responded to our survey. These are Ivory Coast CERT, Togo CERT, and Egypt CERT. And uh, aside from uh, these three national CSERT interviews, we conducted interviews with subject matter experts and leading experts in CSERT development uh, to get insights, to get their insights and to learn more about the challenges and best practices of national CSERT capacity development in low income countries. Sorry, um, affordable tools and trainings for national CSERs. This is kind of the heart of our report. Uh, okay, they know what, what how they are doing and uh, these national CSERs also know what they wanna do in the next five years, but how they can do these things, how they can gain these uh, infrastructures or they how they can gain these uh, knowledge, skills and abilities. So, this is our approach. Because of the time limitation, I cannot go into the details of everything, but uh, here I will discuss it just for one service area to give a snapshot of what you can find in our report. First, I need to say that we used first services framework and uh, to which classifies the the CSER services in five uh, areas. And uh, you can see these five service areas here. I will just show our uh, recommendations for the service area one. Service area one, information security event management is composed of two services, monitoring and detection and event analysis. And for each service area, we check the survey results, what they want to do, what the, the, the national CSERs want to do in the service areas. Among 16 national CSERs, one has no service delivered in service area one. 13 have, ser uh, have services delivered at basic or intermediate levels, and three of them have uh, services delivered at advanced level. When we look at their future plans, six of them wanted to want to offer uh, near monitoring and detection services, and 10 of them uh, want to develop the existing monitoring and detection services. So we see the picture how these services are important for the national CSERs in the scope of this study. At the first stage, we identified the, the competencies uh, needed for this uh, service area. And we used NIST, National Institutes of Standards and Technology, of the United States. They created a guideline, very helpful NIST cybersecurity workforce framework document. They identified competencies for each work role and uh, also the skills, knowledge, skills, and abilities uh, are mapped to these work roles. So we identified the competencies and also relevant uh, knowledge, skills, and abilities for each uh, service area. And then what are the policies and frameworks can help to uh, create these services? For this particular service area, MITRE ATT&CK framework, SANS in-depth security event management framework, or NIST's guide to computer security log management are only three of the relevant frameworks freely available to everyone who uh, want to develop or improve their uh, capability in this service area. In our report, we, we didn't just list them, we gave some uh, context about each of these uh, frameworks and uh, guidelines. And then tools. When we look at this service area, 
the tools in high demand are honeypots, threat intelligence fields, SIEM tools, security event and uh, information management tools, network and host-based intrusion detection tools, and automatic malware analysis tools. In under this five category, we listed the tools which are freely available or plus the commercial tools which can be uh, used to uh, have a technological infrastructure to deliver this service at a high quality. And uh, we provided the details and links of all these tools. So anyone who want to anyone who wants to develop skills and uh, and uh, capacity in the service area, they can refer to the relevant section and uh, they, they will find all the links and information uh, and introductory information about the relevant tools. When we look at the trainings, we discuss some of the particular trainings from Udemy, SANS, EC Council, ISACA, NSN Prelude, and some other global uh, CSART collaborations. These trainings are related to the event monitoring and log analysis, incident analysis, security orchestration, and information security incident management. These are the fields of the trainings, but the particular training names and their links, how these trainings can be accessed are all the details are in our report. Now in the final part, which we believe it is one of the major contributions of our report is innovations in the national CSR capacity building and our recommendations. These are mostly, sorry, these are these uh, innovations and recommendations mostly uh, based on our uh, interviews with subject matter experts and national CSRs. So uh, we highly suggest that focusing on the recommendations here uh, and reviewing them they provide a lot of uh, guidelines and best practices which can be replicated in almost any national CSERT who wants to improve their skills and services. There are uh, over, over 10, I think 13 or 16 uh, recommendations and no innovations we listed. Because of the space limitation, I want to just uh, mention five of them very briefly. Uh, one of them is creating a pipeline and uh, of cybersecurity workforce cooperation with universities and uh, academic institutions. Some of the CSERs organize uh, capture the flag competitions and cyber drills. This helped them to, uh, or some of them are guest lecture or lecture in university programs. These helpful in uh, these efforts are very helpful in creating a workforce because in some countries the required workforce is not available in the local workforce. So these national CSERTs focused on the root cause and tried to develop the skills in their uh, home country and uh, to later recruit these uh, uh, highly qualified people in their organization. And to improve to, for trust building and leverage the public-private partnership. They organized uh, capture the flag competitions and cyber drills. And uh, because we know that, especially at the operational level, public-private partnerships and, and powering the cybersecurity industry are key to the success of, success of CSORT operations. And uh, in terms of funding mechanisms, there are very interesting applications. One of them is from uh, Sir Togo, and uh, they generate uh, its funds uh, uh, in a sustainable way. They provided fee-based value-added services to critical sectors in their country. And then they uh, have achieved a financial independence by choosing a public-private ship model to raise funding. Another one is knowledge transfer among other CSERs and uh, using the, the resources in the region or the, through the regional or international cooperation. A good example is between the Egyptian computer emergency response team and the Tanzania computer emergency response team. EG CERT expert visited uh, Tanzania CERT in Dar es Salaam to train their experts and provided also, it just provided similar support to Uganda CERT. All the details are in our report. 
when uh, I want to give some examples of the regional cooperation and international cooperation, APMIC is supporting the creation of sea source in the Asia Pacific region. The countries who benefited from this initiative include Togo, Samoa, Wanatu, Papua New Guinea, and also NATO, European Union, United States provide some funds or supports for the sea source development in these developing countries. So, as I said, go and visit the report to see all the details and how what are the mechanisms that can be leveraged to sea cert capacity building now at the end of my presentation i'd like to thank you to all gfce and global affairs canada for supporting the research resulted in this uh, great report. And we would also like to thank the National Com Computer Emergency Response Teams for their invaluable inputs in the preparation of this report. You can see the whole list on the left column. And in the middle column, uh, these are the subject matter experts. And thank you for providing insights from an outsider perspective about the challenges and best practices of national CSOR capacity development in low-income countries as I said, especially the recommendations and innovations part came from these interviews. And uh, a big thank you to the members of the project oversight group of GFCE for their feedback to improve this report and put it in its final shape. And thank you for listening. And uh, I think we can take the questions. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Tata. I would like to pass the floor to Dr. Vilnius. Uh, Hello, everyone. Um, so thank you very much for this insightful presentation. Uh, I would like to start with some uh, my personal comments uh, as GFCE Working Group B uh, Task Force uh, for the Securities and uh, Management Area. So um, when looking at this publication, uh, most recent publication in the world regarding uh, CSERT, uh, CSERT I would like to draw everyone's attention and look at the participants uh, of this call as well, seeing so many uh, organizations being represented. I'd like to, to uh, provide some perspective of the impact of this publication and the uh, novelty, besides that it's for low income countries, but uh, we can see that there is uh, extra value not only for these countries. And so, first of all, thank you very much, Canada, for contributing uh, for this research. It is very needed because if we look at the guidance, uh, besides that there are 80 references in the part one and 223 references at the second part, there's not so many uh, guidebooks or handbooks on how to create uh, and manage and improve CSERs. Uh, the key uh, document so far, it was from 2016, uh, Organization of American States created the publications. I see Carrie Ann uh, representing uh, Owen. Uh, was uh, then uh, from Thailand cert I see as well representative where the, the Thailand cert in 2018 uh, updated their guidance on how to work in developing uh, cert despite uh, which part of the world you are from. Then uh, Enisa has published uh, in 2020. Uh, I was part of the uh, contributing teams for that publication. TNO uh, the, under GFCE created in 2021 a national C cert uh, establishment guide. All of these uh, publications contribute with some pieces of, uh, of knowledge, which is relevant for CSETs to be successful. So having uh, the second publication uh, in November uh, of GFCE, so the first one was in May uh, by TNO and GFC, and this one is uh, in November. I, I see that um, it starts the first, this is the first publication which looks at the updated model of CSET services on how to deliver them, even though uh, ITU, uh, ENISA and uh, other organizations have uh, confirmed that updated framework. The first one was uh, from 1999 uh, by CERT-CC um, and I saw Mark in the uh, listeners as well. Um, so that model existed for a period of time and is referred in many publications and practiced by many certs. And then first.org uh, has um, established the CSAT services framework. Then it was confirmed that this is a way forward. 
However, there are not so many publications referring to that model or its use or analysis. Uh, so thank you very much for the research team to doing this excellent analysis and, and bringing that perspective, perspective and, and uh, for the future works and, uh, and practices, I believe uh, your documents can be referenced well. Now, what relates to, to the comments on, um, on uh, open source technologies and the lack of people, I think equally the same arguments apply to any other countries. Uh, it doesn't matter, is it low income or, or non-low low income, at least what I see around the world, even from rich countries. And uh, what Andy, uh, Andy was referring to Center for Internet Security, which runs uh, MS ISAC, which um, is for US, which is not low income countries. And if you look at the operations and what tools we use, and how we work, I believe most of the things that is uh, uh, defined in the two part reports are still very much applicable um, in the operation center in uh, capital of New York State. So uh, seeing that, uh, the, I would like to, to ask uh, a few questions. Uh, first of all, uh, from the research, what you've done have you, have you observed or have some insights on how to establish uh, CSET in low income countries uh, on maybe particular guidance or, or looking into what you address currently in, uh, in, in these years? Um. Okay, thank you for, for the question. Uh, I mean, the first steps that uh, usually are taken and are needed for a CSERT uh, to have national responsibility or to be a national CSERT is to secure the high level strategic support. This is very much needed to get started and, and also to continue offering the services and to establish the partnership within a country or uh, outside the country with, you know, uh, whether collaborators at the international level or the regional levels. Uh, the second, you know, uh, typical step that CSERTs would take is to identify core services. It's basically the scoping the, of the operation of the, the CSERT. Um, of course, uh, when a CSERT is established, the hopes are very high and sometimes uh, you spread yourself too thin without enough you know, resources. So the second point is to try to uh, uh, identify the core services and to have a clear definition and common understanding between the uh, establishing partners about you know, the expectation from that CERT. Um, identifying resources would come next and securing those resources. And uh, uh, we have, what we have seen uh, talking to uh, you know, the experts as well as uh, the, the respondents uh, uh, to, to the survey uh, is how to uh, secure various resources. And in many cases, of course, financial resources uh, are key. Uh, however, uh, there are um, even more important resources, the human resources, uh, how to get you know, the numbers and um, also the level of skills uh, uh, is, is really critical. And that's where capacity building comes in uh, and, and how to do this at the national level uh, at the beginning of establishing the CERT and as you know, uh, the services unfold. And, and obviously moving forward, uh, you'll find more demand for the services of the CSERT as we move on. And uh, there will be or also issues of brain drain, people leaving the CERT, going somewhere else and so on and so forth. So this has to be addressed. The human resources is key. Uh, also organizational support. Uh, you, you are starting an operation of uh, you know, a center, whether it's small, three or four people, or maybe larger, so, uh, we have see, uh, interviewed CERTs that could be up to 30, 40, uh, I mean, uh, person in, in uh, number. So you have the organizational support, the facilities, you know, the services, the legal services, the human research services, and so on. So to have the organization support uh, thought of at the beginning helps really uh, um, add stability to the CSERT, especially at the national level. Then the financial resources are important and you have the technical and technological uh, you know, uh, resources and, and the report touches upon you know, uh, addressing those issues and providing various solutions. Uh, it's not one size fits all. Usually uh, there is a mix between commercial and open source uh, and you can mix uh, this mix change over time and, and you can see a variety of scenarios 
for creating the technical and technological uh, resources. Um, uh, the, the other very important uh, part of the resources to be established is the partnership. Uh, really partnership, you can look at it as you know, a strategic, but also as a resource. Uh, in many cases, during the operation of the CSERT, uh, you reach out to more mature certs, uh, to colleagues, to uh, whether to uh, provide the training, to engage in you know, cyber drills or joint cooperation, or to help you in the operational know-how of how to operate the CERT. So looking at all the key resources that you, you need to have for a national CSERT is really critical. And, and you rightfully mentioned, it's not just for low-income countries, it's it's across you know all spectrum. So it's it's really those results uh, you know can be extrapolated beyond the scope of uh, low-income countries. Uh, finally, uh, the final step once uh, uh, you know secured resources are available, services are you know outlined, uh, how to develop an action plan over a period of time. Uh, and this action plan would help you meet all the uh, anticipated uh, services and objectives at the same time uh, to be able to grow your cert. Uh, uh, having an action plan is important, agreed upon, then you implement the plan and you review it and you circle back. So th th these are basically the ingredients that we have found that uh, to have a, an, an assert of national responsibility or a national assert uh, being established and operating, you need to think about you know, those issues early on and to develop. And of course, there are more details. And if you look at the report, you'll find some of uh, you know, the uh, best practices and uh, good experiences that we, we shared uh, with, with the CERT community and the incident response community. Thank you very much. Um, what I really liked about the report, what you referred to GCI, which is uh, ITU's Global Cybersecurity Index. And uh, ITU has a strong support to, to national CERTs and establishing a an, process and hand-holding and uh, many years uh, commitment, uh, as well capacity building their cyber drills uh, in all the regions of the world. And so it's very, uh, surprising to see that despite wherever you are in the index on GCI, the challenges of the resources uh, are the same. It's still the same equally challenging. Even myself uh, over the last six months uh, for the projects uh, related to ENISA, I have been talking to many even non-low income countries uh, discussing uh, the, the gap between how many people they have and how many are needed to, to fulfill the, the mandate. And uh, even though the sub and, and you mentioned in the table that there's a cybersecurity strategies are there, but it seems that uh, still the gap is huge, probably because uh, there's not a single organization who could fill that gap. It has to be ecosystem, and uh, that's where we come to the the, the partnerships and, and uh, developments. And so, what I um, as well really liked, and I think it's the first. Um, full model mapping of competences. Uh, uh, to my understanding, uh, you have mapped to the NIST uh, NICE uh, related competence uh, matrices for the services areas. Um, and I'm very happy about this result because uh, this, uh, in the background, uh, first.org uh, is developing, uh, as well working there in, in the capacity and trying to create the role model and then as well map to competences. So I think even further on work in that area is gonna be seen in, in the future. And then uh, having several uh, mappings and uh, guidances will allow uh, the users to, to understand uh, and mi mix and match uh, besides um, the very excellent uh, mapping of a training, uh, currently existing training, because training proposals are changing and uh, they're being updated. So, so your uh, training lists and updating uh, for the services, what are possible um, uh, considerations to look at, I believe will help all the readers uh, who want to apply some practical knowledge from, uh, from your report. So my next question would be, which skills are the uh, priority for development to improve uh, CSET uh, services? Uh, maybe you could um, highlight uh, your thoughts uh, while doing this research. Uh, sorry, Avilius, I see that uh, Kalim, uh, Dr. Usmani has also raised his hand for the previous question. Perhaps he would also like to make an intervention. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Vladimir, and, and, and thank you, uh, Avilius. Uh, one, one point which I wanted to add on uh, in uh, Dr. Sharif's uh, let's say, uh, answer when he was talking about setup of, let's say, the C-certs. 
So one thing also I think which is uh, very important and I think is clear to have an officially uh, approved mandate of let's say the national uh, sea certs and, and that should reflect the highest uh, level of uh, political and, and legislative support. And, and, and once we have this, then uh, certainly that there is a let's say clear direction because while let's say while doing our research, we, we have noticed that uh, this is something important because like in the past, as we know that many sorts which have been set up, uh, they, they started with let's say uh, uh, with their services and but they didn't had any let's say a proper a legal mandate and, and because of which uh, let's say the way they would have uh, uh, in a way a uh, grown over, over over time that did not happen so i think that was another important aspect uh, which which i wanted to 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 add on uh, so uh, this is one and and secondly maybe also uh, coming back to the second uh, question uh, really uh, i i can take it up um, because uh, i don't want to put my let's say uh, video because i'm having a cyclone here in mauritius so the uh, internet connection is quite unstable so, so uh, coming back to the uh, questions onto the services, maybe uh, if you look at our research, and then uh, as Dr. Tartar has mentioned, we, we have been, uh, let's say, uh, focusing uh, onto the CSERT uh, and the four CSERT services framework. And, uh, and, 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 and these are, let's say, the um, different uh, five uh, services which we have been uh, talking right from the event management uh, to the knowledge transfer. So this is what we have taken uh, into account while, let's say, mapping uh, those services from, let's say, the different uh, CSERTs uh, which we have interviewed. And, and we have interviewed uh, 16, let's say, uh, CSERTs, 10 from Africa, three from uh, Asia Pacific, and, and three from uh, Latin America. So uh, now if uh, what also we did is that we have, uh, if you look at these uh, five services of the uh, first uh, CSER uh, services framework, it is divided into uh, 26 uh, sub uh, service areas and and then um, as uh, we know that uh, this particular uh, first c c uh, search services framework it has different uh, levels of uh, maturity and thus basic immediate and advanced and and once they say we we, we uh, look at and uh, that so we found that different uh, search uh, which we interviewed we found a uh, varying maturity levels uh, between between them and and uh, out of these service areas, some of them uh, which they do not offer, uh, as we mentioned into our report, is the uh, security event management and, and information uh, security incident management and vulnerability management. So, and 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 uh, greater emphasis was uh, basically uh, uh, put on to the situation analysis and and the knowledge transfer. And so that that's what uh, something uh, let's say uh, we noticed on and then. Um, also, the uh, let's say national sea search. They, they they said that in the coming five years, they uh, have the let's say plans to build their capacity into the areas, especially on the information security event management and uh, situational awareness categories. Uh, that has drawn a kind of an important interest uh, among the new services. So um, that that's again uh, something uh, what we uh, saw. And uh, one of the bottlenecks in the uh, let's say which we found was the insufficient resources to offer these services, and and uh, that also uh, because there is uh, some uh, poor staff qualification, uh, which uh, because of this, I mean, they do not have that kind of let's say uh, skills required. And I think it is uh, mentioned by uh, let's say Dr. Willis and mentioned by Dr. Sharif as well. This is a, a kind of an issue which we have found, and not only in these research, but again, uh, in the different uh, research whom we have been uh, talking, even uh, uh, our matter experts uh, whom we have interviewed, they, they also have been uh, uh, talking onto uh, these lines. And, and then also they, they have mentioned that there have been a difficulty uh, into, let's say, uh, uh, insufficient funding, and which has led to, let's say, uh, they have not been able to hire uh, let's say uh, qualified experts, and that also has led them not to implement let's say these services which we have been let's say talking about and and as part of let's say this particular uh, report. But now coming back to uh, let's say uh, the question of uh, Dr. Velius that uh, what kind of let's say uh, uh, services normally uh, these research they should have, and and once we have been talking to the experts. The experts they suggested that maybe uh, the uh, new uh, uh, let's say uh, 
certs which are setting it up, they can have two to three services and, and, and they should focus on to these two to three services. May not be they have a, a long shopping list because that requires, uh, uh, let's say, uh, resources and resources are not easily available, uh, let's say, uh, into the uh, low income countries. This is what we, we have, let's say, um, observed through our, let's say, research. So in that case, if uh, certs they have to set up in low income countries and especially into developing countries. So they can start with two to three services and then uh, based on to that, they could build up their uh, capacity and then let's say engage into resources and then come up with, and then they can, uh, or they will be able to expand onto the, let's say uh, more services. But the services which we think is important uh, for any uh, CSERT who are going to start, they should have, there are a few which let's say I have listed down as per our research. Uh, uh, we believe incident and uh, vulnerability handling is, is something which normally certs they should have and, and they should also have uh, advisories and the alert warnings and um, communication with uh, the constituency. This is again very important because ultimately they have to have, uh, let's say talking to the constituency in such a way that this is very uh, clearly passed on the message to them in order to act accordingly and on time. Intrusion detection, uh, some uh, security assessment, malware analysis, uh, cyber threat monitoring, because we saw from the survey very clearly that uh, many, uh, let's say, uh, low income countries, uh, CSERTs, they want to develop their services towards uh, information security event management and especially, uh, let's say, uh, uh, traffic or, or traffic monitoring and, 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 let's say, the detection of, let's say, uh, the, the, the uh, threats out of the uh, log uh, traffic. So I think this is one of the services which, again, uh, we have, uh, let's say, managed to, to, to identify that this is something uh, what important uh, uh, let's say uh, aspect they are considering. So in, in, in a nutshell quickly, I think these are the services which they could start with and then uh, with time they could uh, build up uh, accordingly. Uh, thank you so much and over to you, Dr. Willis. Thank you very much. Um, as we will have uh, as well questions from the audience, uh, please uh, get ready. Uh, I, I have one very tough final question. Um, uh, which relates to the um, this resources. Um, I know many, many certs uh, are considering maybe, uh, any, especially in low income countries, uh, if we consider that the national cert is something like digital hospital. It's the first and the, the main hospital of a country run by government. Uh, naturally, it can serve only, as you mentioned, particular services to particular capacity. There's always a question, maybe we should start uh, providing commercial services. In that case, we can grow and provide more and serve better stakeholders. But then the question is uh, about the, you know, will we, what is the model uh, to work jointly? And you have mentioned uh, in public part uh, private partnerships. So it is clear that the way forward, uh, the safe zone uh, for national sets to, to go into the commercializing the services, it's where the natural monopoly is, for example, if it is in uh, particular information sources or what only the nation and the government can have particular data and then working with data and providing services based on that, there cannot be competition. It's more of a cost sharing model. So have you in your research while doing it touched on um, funding models uh, related with the free service versus uh, commercial service for national sites in that way co-funding uh, national set operations? Okay, uh, uh, I, I can take on this one. Uh, it, uh, we have seen, you know, cases uh, where uh, CSERTs start with the support from government or a specific sector that already, you know, uh, have the funds available. Uh, and, and this is really helps jumpstart and focus the effort on building capacity. Uh, however, as you said, rightfully, sometimes the resources are the financial resources are not there. And uh, to have the commercial, you know, uh, interest or services in mind, especially like services in incident management or uh, penetration testing and supporting long and threat uh, 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 analysis and so forth, uh, uh, that is a service that can be extended. And we've seen also, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Togo CERT, for instance, they, they had, you know, public-private partnership in establishing and running the CERT. So it was uh, built with, a, a, you know, a very unique business model 
that is suited for you know the size of the threat, the size of the country, the available resources, partnership with the private sector. And in this case, it was initially an international company that helped them establish the national sea cert. So uh, the model varies, uh, but again, uh, uh, our expectation need to be tuned with this model that we are trying to serve. And of course, in general, uh, you know, to have the financial resources to continue the cert is critical. However, uh, there is also the fear of being driven only by providing commercial services. Otherwise, uh, some national responsibilities will, uh, will not be met. So it is a mix that is unique, and that's why to have strategic support is important. To have a group of you know, partners that would help you at the national level is important. And not all the resources uh, are basically financial. There are operational resources also that can be made available that saves you from you know, uh, incurring more expenses. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, before handing over to um, the uh, audience questions, uh, uh, my final uh, request, uh, maybe you have some short comment, uh, the research team, maybe you have a short comment, how GFC as being multi-stakeholder uh, organization or, or forum or, or method um, could help uh, to make impact uh, in what your research has identified as a relevant uh, component for the future to handle. Yeah, so maybe I can start uh, uh, with this question. Uh, so uh, actually, we have identified many projects uh, that give trainings to the national search, like how or how to develop cybersecurity strategy, how to conduct instant handling. But on the other side, also maybe GFC can focus on much how much more ecosystem can be uh, created and improved uh, different entities in the country. For instance, we talked about the cooperation uh, between the national sort and academia to create a workforce uh, for the country. So maybe uh, GFC can uh, focus on how to create programs that may motivate them to work together and create much more ecosystem in the, in the, in the country. Because national sort is not itself as as an in organization, like it, it can be very strong, but if the ecosystem is not strong, then you will have these talent problems or other things. The second one that we have identified is that, uh, like some special services like uh, event management or situational awareness, actually, certs have uh, a very uh, big uh, willingness to, uh, to uh, increase their capabilities. But these uh, concepts uh, are known at, at general organizational level search, but uh, what does it mean at national search, especially situation awareness? So maybe much more detailed guidelines that are compiled from the uh, developed countries can be created for, for, for uh, also, actually this is required for all countries, but how it can be used, uh, done in affordable way, it could be done here. Uh, so, and also, uh, we have identified that uh, search require technical trainings to improve much more technical services like malware analysis or uh, like like uh, even uh, for example scale security they would like to improve their capabilities in these technical things uh, so so I think how to provide much more technical enhanced technical trainings uh, to the uh, to the uh, national search would be, one uh, problem or issue that can be tackled or discussed more. Thank you very much. Uh, to, to comment on the first, uh, last remark, that currently both FES.org and ENISA provides the training materials to be delivered and technical organizational. However, the license uh, requires that there is no profit being made. So set to set, uh, there's a plenty of space where to reuse this, uh, these trainings for common good, um, in the region or among, uh, as well, ITU and, and the ITU Academy has a set of trainings uh, how to establish site or how to improve their technical capabilities and process incident response. I know Mauritius uh, is involved. Uh, I know other training providers are delivering trainings via ITU platform. Please uh, have a look at that. And uh, I see um, ITU is uh, represented here by Marwan and. Uh, as well as uh, Cyber for Dev, uh, it was listed uh, probably twice in the documents. 
Uh, they as well provide uh, trainings for the countries. Uh, it just need to be requested. Uh, a few few trainings uh, delivered by several experts, including technical and, uh, and other ones. So there's a plenty of place where to, to discuss. So uh, I see uh, Jean Robert uh, is raising a hand. So please. Yes, I would just like to add also a few components uh, where we see that the, the DFC may may be able to help. So if you look at the report and some of the good practices, we have, and you touch on, on some of them, Dr. Vinius, we have identified several, several scenarios and several practices that are used inside region to support capacity building. And uh, I think that the GFC can look at those different scenarios that exist and uh, bring some on how to strengthen and support those uh, uh, delivery so that they can be consistent. That, that's what I would like to add. Thank you very much. So uh, we are we're having 12 minutes to the end of the maximum. So I would like to hand over to Abdul Hakim, uh, GFC Working Group B uh, leader. Uh, so Abdul Hakim, over to you. Uh, thank you, Vilnius. Uh, sorry for interrupting. It's, uh, I was actually enjoying it, but we really, really wanted to, uh, the audience to have a, an opportunity to uh, put forward any questions. So please feel free to either type the questions in or raise your hands and uh, you can ask your questions. Uh, I do, I'm aware that there was an earlier question, I think from Ar Araya, which was answered in the chat. Uh, but maybe Araya, you could just uh, rephrase the question so that the general audience uh, would know what you're talking about, if, if you're still available. Uh, thank you, Sha. Uh, this is Arya. My question was the um, the five service area that you mentioned on the survey. Uh, where did it come from? And I have already and the answer already provided by the Kun Kun John Robert. Okay. And and also Kun Kalin already. They said on the is is our first and such service framework. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, are there any other questions um, or um, observations, concerns? Aha, uh -huh. carry on, please. Uh, thanks so much, Abdul, and congrats to the research team for the research that has been done. Um, I think it's probably important that the work not end with this report. I know the GFCE will be building on it, but I think um, other underserved are probably developing countries are in Latin America and the Caribbean as well, especially the Caribbean. Um, as an example, we just learned a while ago that a team that we trained of seven in 2017, the last person just left. So like one of our certs that we've been building up, suddenly the capacity disappeared all automatically. So we realized that the challenges are even greater than just the training, it's really digging a little bit deeper now that we identify the gaps for the training, but how can we support these governments to actually think about sustainability of the team in a more long-term, so at least the absorption of these trainings will at least have some persons coming up. And I wanted to suggest with even Nick being here that I think an opportunity does rest in building out um, further guidance and guidelines that can actually get to the specifics of these issues, including seeing how us as a community, including GFCE, utilizing the different hubs um, to meaningfully engage with governments now. So like at a higher level, leverage on not just the technical persons, because I think the technical level, we've started to figure out what the challenges are, but how can we leverage something as high profile as the GFCE to bring together ministers that do fund these certs to understand the severity of not funding or not ensuring capacity is sustained in a long, a more meaningful and long-term basis. Um, I also wanted to highlight that um, the guide that we developed all the way back in 2018, it would have been 2017, 2018, that we plan to update it this year um, with funds from Canada as well, Nick probably hearing this as well, <laughs> but we plan to update that guide and actually um, leverage on the ITU and the NISA guide that has come out and see if we can make it a practical tool. We've gotten several requests from Caribbean countries for how to develop a cert and we've actually broken it down to very step-by-step -step basis and we hope that we can leverage on other tools 
and just give a foundation that certs can actually have um, guidance. But I wanted to just emphasize, Abdul, the leveraging of GFC to now bring together the person that makes the cert continue to exist. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Kalim, I'd like you just to touch on some of the issues Kerian has brought up and also touch on the issues of conditions of service and working environments, uh, because you, you already have quite a, an operational situation. Uh, Kalim? Uh, thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for the question, Karen. And, and just uh, wanted to add on to that what we have done into our research and we have reflected that, that how to, let's say, how search they could be able to retain their resources. And I think uh, what we mentioned, uh, first of all, is that uh, to tie up with the universities. And I think Dr. Bessie mentioned onto that. Uh, because why uh, once uh, you're having a tie up with the universities and I think the uh, brain drain is a problem and the talent management is a problem everywhere all around the world, including let's say uh, Africa or, or any other uh, part of let's say the world. So, so in that case, once you're having a kind of a tie up with the uh, let's say uh, the universities, then uh, obviously that, that is helping uh, let's say, uh, uh, do you have a kind of a nursery which you could use if, let's say, the uh, staff is, uh, let's say, uh, leaving from, from you. So I think uh, that's one thing which uh, I wanted to mention. And one good example, which we mentioned in our report, is the uh, Turkish National Search. I mean, they, they have been uh, tying up with the universities and along with the private sector. And, and then they have been, let's say, refilling uh, the, the, their gaps accordingly. And another model, Dr. Sharif has mentioned in the Togo. Uh, because uh, Togo, since they have been uh, charging, they, they, they have a funded service. So in, in, let's say, in order to have the funded service, they could be able to have that sustainability. And that sustainability has been able to provide incentives to the staff for working, let's say, into their uh, search by providing different uh, sort of certification, uh, let's say, uh, trainings and, and, and maybe, uh, many other different, let's say, uh, uh, sort of uh, a capacity building for them, which has, in a way, uh, uh, let's say, uh, motivated them to stay back. So I think the, the, these are the ways, uh, I think, uh, uh, let's say, certainly uh, the, the countries, they could retain their staff. And then um, second uh, component uh, definitely is, is, is the commitment of the, uh, let's say, uh, government uh, funding so that you have enough funding where uh, if uh, in case uh, you have to, uh, let's say, uh, pay these uh, staff, uh, to, to, to uh, let's say, in order to them to stay back, I think always uh, that could again a possibility. I think this is uh, what I wanted to uh, say onto this uh, chair. Thank you so much. Very quickly, Sherry, please, and then Jean Robert. Uh, I would like to highlight a point really that is important that can be used uh, both uh, by uh, C certs, national C certs, especially uh, to justify their existence and to lobby for support. Uh, we have witnessed last year, especially in the United Nations framework, we have the group of governmental experts, as well as the open-ended working group that develop international cyber norms and uh, you know, confidence building measures where C-certs and C-certs with national responsibility, uh, they have a significant role to play. So it's very important, you know, if you want to advertise or sell the services of the CSERT or justify their existence and to get funding and support at different circles within a nation and internationally is to lobby. Because, I mean, those reports coming out of the uh, UN uh, group of governmental experts, as well as the open-ended working group, were supported by all the membership of the United Nations. So it, it is global. It is important to highlight. And also, I'd like to uh, emphasize that that the GFCE can play a significant role in lobbying among uh, decision makers at the, higher, uh, at the highest levels uh, at, uh, globally on really the importance of supporting um, national CSERTs uh, and supporting their capacity building, supporting their mandates, and that they have a significant role when we talk about implementing you know, cyber norms, uh, building uh, confidence across different nations, CSERTs are central to this. So they require a lot of support. And this, you know, uh, you know, encouragement needs to be translated into mechanisms and financial support as well. jean Robert? Yes, um, I would like to add a, a quick uh, on to that, uh, supporting both the idea develop, developed by uh, Kalib and Dr. Sheriff. Uh, something that we have seen also, and that uh, uh, is worth mentioning, and that can be also explored and maybe even supported through the GFC work, work item 
to, to look at uh, what, what is going on on some specific national framework and how we can uh, bring out uh, those uh, successful practice and uh, make case study uh, on, on that and, and build upon that is um, that we have observed uh, some specific cases during our, res uh, our, our research where in some countries they have been even able to uh, motivate all the different stakeholders within, within the national ecosystem and typing resources from, I would say, not traditional uh, stakeholders like private sector, but also CCTLDs and internet exchange point where those teams were able to identify resources to support the, 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 the national team. Uh, something that we have also noticed and that is worth mentioning, and that is also interesting is a mechanism that uh, some of the teams have used to retain knowledge uh, developing knowledge ba knowledge based artic article case studies to to be able to capture uh, the experience and, and some of the knowledge skills and know how of some uh, high level uh, skills in in their uh, teams and making sure that in fact the knowledge is retained or, or some practice around uh, making sure that there are mechanisms for cross-training cross and upskilling. So those are definitely uh, ideas that uh, within the GFC framework, we can develop further, look at further and see how uh, those can be made into kind of uh, more concrete or, or more strengthened case studies that, that can be used by, uh, for the benefits of, to, uh, of everyone. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, Velimir, do you have any uh, housekeeping or announcements uh, for subsequent events prior to closure? We have about a minute left. Um, I would like to uh, address this to everybody here who may uh, belong to working group B. Just as a reminder that uh, we will be having our very first working group B meeting uh, next week on the 10th of February with the agenda and reminders and other relevant reading materials being distributed this week. Uh, when it comes to uh, folks who uh, might want to spread the word about this report, the links have uh, been shared already, but uh, as this session is being recorded, uh, the recording itself will also be available on the GFCE's uh, YouTube channel, so you can re-watch it at leisure in case that you missed any part of it. Uh, back to you, Abdelhakim. Okay, thank you very, very much. I, I do want to thank the Africa Cert uh, research team and uh, all the collaborators. Again, Global Affairs Canada, thank you so very, very much. And uh, certainly the project oversight group. Um, uh, Velmia, thank you. And Vilnius, Dr. Vilnius in particular, I'm really very grateful. Thank you very, very much. And all of you for attending. Uh, sorry, we had to cut it short, but it's, uh, you know, um, an hour and a half, and uh, unfortunately feels like 20 minutes and the hour and a half is done. So on that note, thank you very much and have a great day and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. All the best. Thank you. A round of virtual applause for the wonderful moderation and the amazing researchers joining us today. Amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> GSC was honored to be facilitating. Thanks, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much.